So the, so the next paper is about uh, uh, yeah, some oblivious transfer and secret sharing. It was, it was authored by, by Yong Chun Zhao and Sherman Chao. And as I understand, Sherman intended to give the talk, but he, he would not get into the United States. So the talk is given by Jian Liu, who also authored one of the papers on the previous session. So we hope it all works out then. <laughs> and perhaps you will also answer some questions. Uh, I will try. We see how it, <laughs> how it goes. So please. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm presenting on behalf of Zhao Yongjun and uh, Sherman Chao from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Uh, they are unable to attend the PES due to the long visa processing time. So if you have attended the previous session, you should uh, have heard about the private set intersection, or PSI. PSI allows two mutually entrusted parties to compute uh, the intersection of their private sets without revealing anything not in the intersection. So PSI is uh, applicable in many scenarios. Suppose two strangers on the internet want to find, uh, find out their common interest before deciding whether they are going to be friends or not. They are strangers so that they don't want to uh, let the other party know their uncommon hobbies. So PSI can also be useful in the commercial world before launching a joint promotion. For example, the two companies may want to figure out the set of common customers, but the customer list itself is a valuable commercial asset that should not be revealed. So the most typical setting is as follows. Two parties, Alice and Bob, have a private set X and Y respectively. And in such a asymmetric setting, Alice, who is uh, who receives the re uh, who may receive the the real output is usually referred to as a client, and Bob is usually called a server. Uh, very efficient PSI protocols has been proposed in top tier uh, conferences in past few years. So the formula formalization of PSI is elegant. However, it has some limitations. We argue that in some applications. Unconditionally revealing the intersection may not be desirable. Consider the match matchmaking application. If Alice and Bob only share one or two common hobbies, they are not going to be friends eventually. It is a compromise of privacy to reveal the to reveal the common hobbies to a stranger. So we find that. We, we find that always revealing the intersection is not preferable in many natural settings. We believe that we should, we, should, we should only reveal the output when necessary. The definition of necessary could be different in different contexts. In the previous two examples, the condition is based on the intersection size, for example, exceeding some threshold. Perhaps in some other applications, the output should be revealed, revealed only if a certain element exists in the intersection. So in general, we initiate the study of private settings intersection with access structure. We impose an addition requirement over PSI. Namely, the intersection should be revealed only if the intersection satisfies certain conditions. We show how to construct a PSI with access structure in a modular way. To this end, we study two intermediate, intermediate protocols as basic building blocks. The first one is called oblivious transfer for a sparse array, called OTSA. And the second one is called a secret transfer with access structure, which is called STAS. So let's start with OTXA. Following the two-party computation, OTSA is defined as follows. The receiver holds an index set x1 to xn. The sender holds another index set y1 to yn. Each sender index yi is also associated with a data item di. At the end of the protocol, the receiver gets the set of data items di, such that the corresponding sender index also appears in the receiver index set. 
our notion generalizes the standard OT notion because the receiver index Xi is not necessarily a subset of the sender index set Yi. Moreover, we require that the intersection of the two index sets are hidden. Namely, the receiver only receives a set of, a set of data items without knowing their corresponding indexes. So we introduce a simple construction for OTSA based on techniques in the PSI literature. The idea is to encode the receiver index set as a root of polynomial. If we encrypt the coefficient of the polynomial and the additively homomorphic encryption scheme, anyone can evaluate the polynomial at a certain point in the cipher test domain. With oblivious polynomial evaluation in the last slide, it is easy to understand our construction of OTSA. The reviewer sends the encrypted polynomial to the sender. The, uh, the polynomial P is constructed such that the rules are elements in the index set of the sender, of the, of the receiver. The sender evaluates the polynomial at YI as a previous slide. The result is a cipher test encrypts, uh, encrypting PYI, which is further randomized to be uh, RI times PYI, uh, using fresh randomness RI. Lastly, the data item DI is added to the cipher test domain. So overall, overall effect is that if YI is in the receiver index set, the final cipher test will be decrypted to be the data item DI. Otherwise, it will be decrypted to something <coughs> random. So with oblivious polynomial evaluation in the last, so the, computa the computational complexity of this simple construction is ONM. We prove its security in the honest but curious model and is tended to uh, achieve malicious security using efficient zero knowledge proofs. For better efficiency, we propose an efficient construction with linear complexity in the honest but curious model based on garbled, garbled balloon filter. Details can be found in our paper. So with OTSA as a building block, we move forward to another intermediate protocol called the secret transfer with access structure, which is one step away from our final goal. To formally define STAS, we need to first recall the notion of secret sharing. A secret S is, uh, is split into shares according to some, some access structure. The secret can be re reconstructed only from some qualified subset of shares. A qualified subset of shares could not reveal any information about the secret. So the, the definition of STAS is quite similar to OTSA. The main difference is that the sender's input is different. It contains a single secret value S instead of a set of data items. The output of the receiver is also different. The receiver always learns the size of the intersection of the two index sets. And it should, should only obtain the secret value S if the intersection satisfies some predefined access structure. So to construct STAS here, we illustrate with our OTSA based on oblivious polynomial evaluation. Uh, the, the senders play the secret S under some access structure and use the set of shares as the data items in OTSA. If a particular sender index yi is also in the receiver index set, then the receiver gets the corresponding secret share si. Otherwise, it, it is a random value. So with stas, PS, psi with a set structure is, really, is readily achievable. So the sender randomly selects a a secret S and then engage in a STAS with the receiver. At the end, the receiver can reconstruct the secret if and only if the intersection satisfies some access structure. The secret, the secret S serves as an access token 
deciding whether the reviewer can get the intersection or not. In more details, the sender and the receiver can now engage in a normal PSI over the set of elements, but every element is now appended with the secret value S. At the end, if the receiver obtains a set token S in the previous step, she can learn the intersection of S prime and Y prime, which is essentially the intersection of X and Y. On the other hand, if the receiver does not have the set token, the intersection will be an empty set. So to conclude, we introduce a, new, a, a few new no notations and present a series of constructions which lead to our PSI with access structure. The first future work is to hide the sets of the intersection in STAS. Another interesting future, future work is to support non-monotone access structure. Yongjun and Sherman solve these two problems in another paper. They can, they can be contacted at uh, these addresses. So finally, an uh, advertisement from Sherman. Sub submission deadline of CANS is coming soon. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>